I'm Joe Misich with Nebula Solutions Group. In this video, we're going to take a look at SAP's predictive MRP application. This is an app that's going to allow you to do what you used to do in R3 with rough cut planning. You're going to be able to take your planned independent requirements that you may have brought from in from an SNOP, maybe manually done on a spreadsheet and uploaded. Take that as your demand plan and then weigh it against capacity for multiple work centers using the actual routings that produce this. Ultimately, this tool is all about you being able to actually execute on what the demand plan that's been loaded, PIRs, has asked for. And where do you need maybe some more capacity? Where do I need to maybe think ahead and pull some production back or possibly bring in some supply early? Or maybe my constraints are too much with one vendor, I may have to get to a second vendor or possibly bring in some more capacity at a second manufacturing line. All these things become evident as you use this tool to evaluate your demand plan. So let's jump in, take a look at what we have. Okay, we're gonna create a simulation here. So we'll go into the app. To make this go a little faster, I'm gonna copy an existing one. This is just the name. This is when do we want this to start? If this was a very large simulation, maybe you'd schedule it to run off time. This is a fairly small one, so we'll run it immediately. Some basic information, some key ones to point out here though. Um, the bucket category, monthly, weekly. We're gonna use weekly because our planned independent requirements are created weekly. The date that you want this to start uh, will start in May and end in uh, March of next year. Pick our plant. We have several materials here, our uh, top end materials. And then you can force it to look at inactive PIRs. And we're going to look at uh, the version 00. So that you can actually point to these specifically. This is very nice if you're just putting together your planning, but you don't want this to hit MRP right away. So you create your PIRs in an inactive version. And that way it doesn't hit MRP until you've done all of this pre planning um, within PR MRP. So we'll check this, see if it's okay. It says it's fine, we can go ahead and schedule. And let's schedule. Okay, this is in process. It's a very short one, it'll probably be done pretty quickly. And we've got some results. Okay, let's go ahead and process the run we just did. Here's our run going to go ahead and drill into it. So let's take a look. We've got a summary here of where we're at. We've got 10 capacity issues. Right now the delivery performance is 100% and we'll see where that's when that changes. Um, nothing has an invalid source, meaning there's all good production uh, versions out there for this. And we also have violated constraints and we'll go into what that means in a little bit here. First, let's start a look at some of the capacity issues that we have. We can do a very simple thing here and start moving things around to see if that alleviates that. We can take these and maybe pre-produce them. So let's lock this down to 60. That fixed a capacity issue right there. But you see, notice our delivery performance dropped. Um, that's because the original plan asked us to build 75 in that week of this particular part. We're knocking it down to 60. That means we've got a delivery issue there. Can make that up by maybe making 65 here. Maybe we can make 70 here. And by doing that, we have no capacity issues or we cleared one of the 10 and our delivery performance there. So just by pulling ahead, taking 15 out of this week, spreading it, those 15 across these two weeks, we've now made that up. So that's one of the things you can do. So let's take a look at one more thing we can do with capacity. 
So let's take a look at this overload. And we can click on this multi-level simulation for any one of these. And we'll click on the top level part. And you see we have this change source of supply now is not grayed out. And the source of supply in this case is a production version. And in this case, it represents another routing which uses a different work center. And what it's saying is, look, you need to shift some of this over here, right? So if we adopt this proposal, instead of having seven, we'll have 36 on our assembly line one. On our alternate line, we'll put 34 of them. And we can apply that. And now that issue goes away. We dropped our capacity issues by one. Okay, let's take a look at what else we can do with capacity issues. Let's take a look at another week here where we have an issue. And we can change the available capacity, right? So we've got 119 hours on here. We're 6.8 hours over. We can change the available capacity. And easy way is to say, look, it's only 7% over. Let's just adopt that and say that that's okay. Now that's cleared up, we have one less issue to deal with there. If we're okay with ignoring a lot of these, because we'll figure it out, know, we'll handle this when it comes. Right now we're just in a planning mode. Um, what we can do is highlight the whole work center and this disregard capacity issues comes up. So we click that. It's gonna ask me to verify that I'm doing what I wanna do. And now they're gone, right? They're still technically there. It didn't change any of the numbers, but it said, okay, you're gonna ignore those again for planning purposes. So we'll clear those out so that you can move on with your work. One of the things that's nice, makes this an improvement over the former rough cut planning that you used to do in R3 is this flexible constraints. With this, I can take a look at a supplier and I can say, what is their capacity to supply me? Just because I give them an order of 10,000 units, can they actually supply that? So this allows you to take into account their capabilities in your planning. And again, remember, this is a pre-planning. This is not active. This should be well done well before um, you're actually re releasing planned orders. Um, this is at a mid to long term planning level. But this is very nice to be able to look at this as you're putting together your production plan for the next quarter, next year. Um, you're, you can go ahead and put these supplier constraints. You can do them also for STOs. If you've got a plant in your own company that's supplying you with one of these components, you can put constraints there. And you can also do it for individual materials that you're producing. Perhaps another line within your plant has to produce these. They may have a constraint. You can add those in here to do that. Okay, let's look at one of our flexible constraints that's been broken. So right here, we're at 305 in week 23. Let's see what makes that up. These are all the demands that are hitting that during that week. So let's see if we can fix one of these constraint violations. Let's click on this and pull in a quantity and accept this proposal, apply that, and now our constraint is fixed. <clears throat> so we're easily able to say, okay, just by pulling in a component, we can alleviate that uh, violated constraint of the vendor only being able to supply 300 pieces per week. So after we've done all of our reviewing, fixed capacity issues, accepted some others, looked at our constraints, looked at alternative production lines, 
Our final step after we've done all this is to go ahead and release this. So if we go ahead, hit the release button. Pretty straightforward here, except for one thing. If we want this to be the active version, we switch this. And what that's going to do is when we hit release, it's going to take that planned independent requirement that we base this entire thing off of and create a copy with our new values and make it the active version. So it will transmit to, um, to MRP. Let's go ahead and do that. Simple as that. If we go in and look at these planned independent requirements, and I'm going to look at all the versions for a single part here. I change this to weekly. And we'll see, this is an earlier version here. But if I look over here, so I've got the inactive version, which was the one that I started with. Then I've got a new active version here. And this allows you to see what you've changed, right? So we started, we had that issue, we had a capacity issue, and then we took that stuff, spread a couple to some earlier weeks, and that alleviated our capacity issue. Now you see that. This is the released version. This is what's going to MRP. And now we've used this tool to go ahead and allow us to take our production plan give a rough capacity for our own work centers, as well as our vendor constraints, um, to give us a good picture of that, to do our mid and long-term planning. So as you can see, Predictive MRP is a powerful tool that'll allow you to take a demand plan and balance against your available capacity, as well as your supplier's constraints, so that you can put together a very cohesive plan that you're able to execute. Thanks for watching today's video. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're going to continue to provide these kinds of videos.